The intent of this part two video is to discuss three bomb bay components adopted by the B-17 bomber. We will unpack the function and usage of bomb fuses, bomb shackles, and bomb release units. The purpose of a bomb fuse is to detonate the bomb's large explosive fill. The most common type of bomb dropped by B-17s were the 500 pound general purpose demolition bombs. These bombs are designated as the AN-M64. The AN-M64 bomb will be fitted with a nose and tail fuse. The tail fuse is added as a redundant feature to ensure the bomb will detonate. The most common type of nose fuse adopted for this type of bomb is the AN-M103. A bomb will be considered fully armed when the fuse's anti-detonation safety systems have been disengaged. When a bomb departs the bomb rack, the fuse vanes will be exposed to the slipstream. The slipstream speed will match the bomber's true airspeed. At 30,000 feet, a B-17 will release its bombs at a true airspeed around 240 miles an hour. When exposed to the airstream, the fuse's vanes will start to rotate. The vanes are angled aerodynamic surfaces and will act like a pinwheel. The vane shaft is connected to internal mechanical gears which will align the fuse's detonation system and dislodge the fuse's safety disc. After 345 vane rotations, the vane will fly off of the fuse and the bomb is considered fully armed. If the vane does not rotate, the bomb is considered safe and will not detonate even at ground contact. The fuse contains two independent triggering systems. The bomb can be set to detonate either at contact or the fuse can be configured for a 0.01 second detonation time delay after contact. A small time delay may be needed to maximize the bomb's blast effect. It will be more effective for a bomb to detonate inside a factory rather than on the factory's roof. Most of the bombs dropped by bombers will have a small time delay. For instantaneous explosion, the fuse's setting pin will be pulled out. The fuse's striker will detonate a fast-acting lead titral mixture primer compound. For a time delay explosion, the fuse's setting screw will be set in. The fuse's blunt firing pin detonates a mercury compound booster lead, which in turn ignites a black powder delay. Either of the fuse's detonation system will ignite a fuse booster charge. The booster charge ignites an auxiliary booster charge. The auxiliary booster charge ignites the bomb's explosive fill. The succession of charge detonations from the primer to the boosters to the bomb's explosive fill is a bomb's explosive train. It is critical the fuse vanes do not rotate until the bomb is released. The vane is prevented by rotating by two mechanical systems while attached to the bomber. The fuse's cotter pin tag and arming wire. The fuse's cotter pin tag will need to be removed from each of the bomb fuses while the bomber is headed towards the target. The cotter pin tags will need to be retained by the bombardier and shown as proof that this part of the bomb's arming process was taken. At bomb release, the arming wire will be back pulled through the fuse vanes. The fuse vanes will now be free to spin once the bomb enters the slipstream. The fuse vanes will spin 345 revolutions and fall off. The fuse's mechanical steps will be complete when the bomb has fallen about 600 feet away from the bomber. The bomb will now be considered fully armed. Two suspension lugs are welded to the AN-M64 500-pound weight bombs. The lugs are 14 inches apart. The ground armament crew will install the nose and tail fuses to the bomb. An arming wire will be attached to the nose and tail fuses. A safety clip will be added to the arming wire ends. Bomb shackles are the interface between the bomb and the bomber. Shackles carry, arm, and release the bombs. There are various types of shackles adopted. Shackles were selected based on the weight of the bomb. The most common shackle adopted by the B-17s were the B-11 shackles. These shackles can support bomb weights from 100 pounds to 1,600 pounds. A mechanical gearing system links the shackles release lever arm to the shackles bomb release hooks. The shackle's release lever arm has two positions, cocked and release. When the release lever arm is rotated to the release position, the shackle's bomb carry hooks will open and the bomb will release. The shackle spring-loaded arming lever has two positions, safe and armed. 
If the bomb is released while the arming lever is in the safe position, the arming wire will stay attached to the bomb and prevent the vanes from spinning. The bomb will not explode on contact. If the bomb is released with the arming lever in the arm position, the arming wire will be retained by the shackle. As shown previously, the arming wire will be back threaded through the fuse vanes. The fuse vanes will be free to rotate, the bomb will explode on contact. While on a bombing mission, the shackle's release lever will be in the cocked position and the arming lever will be in the safe position. The ground crew will attach the shackles to the bomb prior to loading the bombs on the airplane. The fuses and arming wire will either be attached on the ground or after the bomb is hung on the racks. The A4 bomb release unit manipulate the shackles lever arms. The bomb release units are electromechanical. The bomb release units will only be loaded on stations which carry bombs. Since the typical loadout on a B-17 consists of 12 500-pound general purpose bombs, only 12 of the 42 B-17 bomb stations will have an A-4 bomb release unit installed. The bombardier will send an electrical signal to arm the bombs. The A-4 bomb release unit will mechanically rotate the shackle's arming lever from safe to arm. When an electrical signal is sent from the bombardier's compartment to release the bombs, a solenoid in the A-4 bomb release unit moves the shackle release lever from cocked to release. If the bomb is hung up, a crew member can pry the shackle's release lever over the bomb release unit's spring-loaded ear with a screwdriver. The B-17's bomb bay rack system was designed to withstand a static load factor of 7 Gs in the vertical down direction, 3 Gs in the forward direction, and 2 Gs in the side direction. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.